Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto, and in this video, I'm about to explain how to configure a Delta robot uh, to make it work with Copelesim. So the idea of the video is to uh, help you to identify links and joints of this type of robots, how they work, and also its hierarchy. So we are also going to talk about the inverse kinematics model of Copelesim, so those uh, this kind of robot can uh, can work. Okay. Copilisim actually is a software that, uh, by default, using the hierarchy structure that I explained in the previous video, uh, only allows you to um, create serial link manipulators, but with the help of dummies, uh, which are just simply objects that we will place in specific places, we will create some constraint, kinematic constraints that will ensure that there's a, a constraint in this case of position, so the robot convert or it uh, uh, behaves as a parallel robot indeed. Okay, so let's start by describing how this uh, robot is made of. And um, this is link zero. This is the fixed link. This is the first of all links. And then we have three arms. As you can see here, we have three arms. And they correspond to each of these joints. So this is joint one, joint two, and joint three. One, two, and three. And from here, we have three arms, as I said. And at the end of it, what we have is a platform. That will be the end effector of the robot, okay? You can see that right now the platform is not properly uh, positioned or the arms are not proper, properly positioned corresponding to the platform, but don't worry, we will solve that, okay? So the thing is that let's try to understand first the hierarchy of these three arms. As I mentioned, we have the, a revolute joint here, which corresponds to these uh, servo motors that will make this link here rotate and then we have another link here it's the green one let me just occlude for now the joints so this is a um, second link that will be able to have displacements left to right and also it will be able to rotate because here we have a pre uh, cylindrical um, uh, joint so in order to implement this cylindrical joint, in VREP, we don't have such type of joints, but we can do it by just simply combining, let me show it again, prismatic revolute joint. Okay, so this is the prismatic joint and this is the revolute joint, all of, uh, both of them on the same uh, coordinates. And uh, this will allow this link to shift and rotate. This is exactly what we want here. And then we have, from this link here, we have two spherical joints, the one on the left and the one on the right, as you can see. And then we have two actually bars or two links, the left one and the right one. Yeah, and that's actually our serial manipulator here, as you can see, okay? And this uh, arm finishes just simply with those uh, dummies that you can see here, those ones here, this one on the left, this one on the right. And as I mentioned, um, they should be positioned here, but for now they are not. So the idea is that we're going to establish a relation between an inverse kinematic relation between this dummy here and this dummy here. And also we are going to do the same here with this one here, sorry. This one here, uh, okay, that one there and that one here. So this, this, the Copelisim software solves the inverse uh, relation that we, we want, okay? And, uh, okay, so now what I need to explain is about the platform. So the platform, uh, we have, as I mentioned before, three prismatic joints here that will allow me to freely move the position of the platform. We have a tip. This is exactly the position of the platform that we, uh, we want to control. And in order to do that, what we have is also another uh, dummy, but this is fully independent. It's, it's in the world, it's in the scene, and it's the reference point, which means that if we, the idea is that we want to move the reference point here, this dummy, we want to control it, and we want to make sure that this tip here that depends on the platform moves correspondingly to this reference point here. And because we have these uh, joints here, Obviously, if we move the reference point and they are linked to the tip, then these three joints will be used to position the platform. So the platform will be moved and this, the values for these three joints will be computed based on 
how we move this reference point here, okay? Always in the inverse kinematic relation, as I'm about to explain, okay? So, uh, this is the platform, and then the platform has uh, three, um, actually has the same, exactly the same, let me just hide this first. It has three links, as you can see here, one, two, and three. That will be the bars here below for those arms. And obviously these uh, links also have um, these prismatic and revolute joints that made, or actually they, they act as a cylindrical joint, each of them. And then the links have two dummies, as you can see, one on the left and one on the right. So now the goal is to make all the proper connections for the inverse schematic module to work. So it's quite easy, actually. So as you can see from the names is what we have to do is double click here on the on the on the dummy and create a link so we link it this one here we link it with its corresponding target dummy and once we do this link dummy you can see here a red line that means that both links both dummies are linked and the type of uh, link it's uh, we were going to use the uh, inverse kinematic a tip target uh, uh, link type, okay, by default. So we have to do the same thing with the rest of links. So this one will be related with that one. Uh, that one uh, will be create related with that one. And, and you can see here also in the hierarchy scene uh, that these uh, connections are created, okay, indicated that they both dummies are linked. So that one will be uh, related with that one. And that one will be related with that one and that one here will be that one and then the last one we have to do is the reference point and the tip okay so we have all the connections that we want and now one thing is to have the connections and the other one is to uh, know how to solve them so in order to do that we have to use the inverse kinematics module that you will find in the tools menu in calculation module properties and then you have the kinematics so what we have to do is uh, add a new inverse kinematic group and because of the configuration of this mechanism I select the mechanism is redundant and then I have the DLS uh, calculation method this is uh, why I choose that one on how these methods work it's a topic for a different video okay but for now I'm happy if you select, for instance, 100 iterations on these damping parameters. This is the usual configuration I use with this uh, uh, method. And then we have to actually uh, set the, the constraints that we want. Okay, so the idea is that we select the, the IQ, uh, inverse kinematic elements that we want, and here we have to select all the tips that we want to uh, be part of this inverse kinematic group. So we have to select this one here, the tip. And as you can see, by default, this one already, obviously, it knows that this one here is linked with the corresponding target here, okay? And we have to select the base. By default, our, you have the world, but in this case, I think it might, it makes sense that if you minimize everything here and uh, you see that both links depend on link zero, the actual base should be link zero, okay? And we have to do the same thing for the rest of dummies. So let's add that one here and select link zero. And let's add this one here, select link zero and that one here. Select link zero, and then we have the third one, left and right. Okay, I'm oh, sorry, this is link zero, and this is link zero, link zero, yeah. And as you can see also, um, it is important to set the constraints. In all the links I have set up to now, uh, we have the X, Y, Z constraints, which means that these both dummies will be forced to have the same x, y, and z position. This is exactly what we want in order to make sure that this bar here goes to this position there, okay? 
And also, but in order to finish uh, with this presentation, let me just simply add the tip join also, uh, sorry, the tip uh, dummy. And this one will be ready with the wall because the reference point is in the wall, okay? So this is everything we have to do in order to set the proper inverse kinematics for this robot. And now I'm going to run the simulation. And uh, as you can see, as long as I run it, the inverse kinematic module has already placed the bars on the corresponding position. Also, I have a script here uh, in which I have put uh, just simply uh, the control of the, of the reference point. So to show you how this uh, robot works by moving the corresponding position of the reference point. Here, what I'm changing by moving these sliders, I, I, in the video description, I, I give you the code for this, for this script, okay? What I'm changing in uh, by by modifying these sliders here is just the reference points position. The rest is done by the inverse kinematic module. Okay, thank you very much.